One of my biggest challenges has, throughout my career, has been finding my voice. I kind of grew up in Washington, D.C. I worked, I worked in the Treasury Department under the Clinton administration. Later, I worked for the Obama administration in the White House. It is a very hierarchical system. The idea is that you are behind the scenes and that um, you are anticipating the thoughts and the ideas of the person who you're working with. Getting comfortable expressing what I thought and using my voice was something that was um, definitely challenging for me. It's about taking your seat at the table and it's about having impact right away. And the only way you can really do that is to use your voice. What was the, the most dramatic career transition for you? I think there were two. Um, I think the shift from the White House under Obama to Facebook was a big shift. And then I think the shift from running global policy at Facebook to coming to be COO of Instagram um, was also a big shift. Working with Kevin and Mike, two founders of Instagram, was a really unique, special opportunity. I am an executor by nature. I run fast, I get the stuff done, but what they taught me was to slow down a little bit and make sure that that upfront process of identifying the problem that we're solving, making sure that there is a, um, a thoughtful process around developing the solution, that it's the best solution for solving the right problem. And that that first step is so critical to getting it right. How have you thought about navigating both career and, and family as you've ascended the ranks? I have had one very, very good teacher on this, and that is my 11-year-old son. Because when he was about four years old, he taught me an early lesson that has just been with me since then. And that is that we went in for, my husband and I went in for our parent-teacher conference, and they had do just done a unit on colors. And they opened the portfolio and showed me um, what he said. And what he said was something like, you know, black. It makes me angry when my mother um, turns down the music so she can talk on the phone in the car. Blue. It makes me sad when my mother says, hold on, um, I just need to finish one more email. And what I realized is what he was saying is that you might not spend that much time with me because you have a busy job and you've got other things going on in your life. But for the time that you are spending with me, be present. If you were to write a letter to your younger self of 15 or 20 years ago, what advice do you wish you knew then? Don't mourn the breakups for too long. When I think about how much time I spent sitting on a friend's couch, at a friend's table, uh, taking a walk you know, with a friend, talking about the breakup and how sad I was, I could have read more books. I could have written a book. I could have researched a topic deeply. I could have train for a marathon. I could have done so many other things that would have been more productive. I could have volunteered my time more. And so I would say don't mourn the breakups for too long.